here they come. Now, it's up to the roadshow team to make sure it all gets done. Ooh, yikes. Search through everything that's been pulled out of Canadian cupboards to find the special things that will make 45 minutes of good TV. Welcome to Documentary CBC. I'm Mark Starovich. As TV programs go, the Antiques Roadshow seems pretty straightforward. Set up a few cameras, hire some experts, and invite people to haul down their trinkets and treasures for appraisal. But as collectors sometimes discover, looks can be deceiving. After seven years of planning, the BBC came to Canada for two tapings of the show in 2002. Organizers got far more than they bargained for, with queues over a kilometer long. Today we get a chance to see how the program's put together and what's involved in picking the handful of pieces that actually make it on air. From Rough Cuts, here is Behind the Scenes at the Antiques Roadshow. It's billed as the biggest day of treasure hunting this city has ever seen. I know it's not a Stradivarius, but you can always dream. Thousands have descended on the National Gallery in Ottawa. I'm glad it's not raining. The smell of wet wool would just be awful. And they've dredged up all the family heirlooms. I'm Brother Clark. Both the older than I am. And oddball ornaments they could possibly find. You brought a button on our handle here before you get to our reception. You brought everything, haven't you? Just about, about everything. everything but the kitchen uh, uh, I think kitchen the kitchen sink, sink is there too. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's been a huge, huge turnout. We thought that, you know, there would be a dropout from the tickets, but nobody has dropped out. And this is why we are, as we are, very, very busy. You know, we always pray for a good crowd, but this is a bit more than we prayed for, I think. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Sure, the BBC has taken the Antiques Roadshow outside of Britain before. That's but this show in Ottawa, followed by one in Toronto, is definitely their most ambitious overseas trip yet. And really, who could have anticipated what this trip to the colonies would bring? The Russian stirring silver candelabra. Canadians know this show so well. They've been glued to their sets watching the Antiques Roadshow for more than a decade. That's 10 years of pent-up demand and dreams. This is the scene the show's viewers know so well. Brief encounters with roadshow experts. What do you do with that? I have no idea what that is. That's why I brought it to you. <laughs> Probably you got, not much. You got a dog or a cat? <laughs> oh, that's what it's good. Have you? <laughs> no, I guess I should get one. You get one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But this is the story of what the TV audience never sees. Here is the world behind the cameras at the Antiques Roadshow. Christopher Lewis is the first person you must meet here. Was that worth waiting for? How long have you waited? He's the power behind the scenes at the road show. You've done well. You've done well. But aren't the experts great? <laughs> that cost you to say that, didn't it? Yes. You hated having to say that. <laughs> He's been the executive producer for 23 years. He's a leader and a detail man. I just got one, boss. What's that? Boom. Lewis has marshaled his team through hundreds of these events in Britain. But now, he's up against a Canadian onslaught. There are many strange objects coming in. Not Egyptian value. And that includes Canadian folk art. Whirly gigs? Whirly gigs. Whirly gigs. Oh, well, come and see. We recently had a pair that brought uh, 30,000. I don't think it was good as these. An American bought them and put them through auction and they went for 85000 so. These weird wind toys heading to the spotlight must make the Brits wonder what Canadian antiques are all about. But we figure from about the 1880s or 90s, and so did the expert here, he thought they were the best he's seen for this kind of folk art. 
they're worth from twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. Big so surprise! I'm yeah. still shaking. <laughs> 1920 hockey stick for about eight hundred bucks. Say. So, it's quite well. Yes, actually, I was very surprised. Um, I didn't think they were quite so rare, but uh, he said they were, and he was very impressed. The uh, labeling was still on it. My dad was an old horse trader. One weekend, he come home with these things. Well, the figure about 9,500. Nine, yeah. yeah. We're holding we, them a little closer. We were hoping <laughs> there were going to be a million. But... <laughs> the mix of objects has been out of this world. I could have made four programs if I'd had enough cameras to do so. Uh, and that's frustrating because there are pieces I've been turning away, which I give my eye teeth for in the UK. <laughs> they said that if we had have been here early, they would have uh, taped us for the show. And I said, well, we were here early. <laughs> we were here at 9.30. <laughs> Some folks are finally heading home, but the lineup coming in is endless. Generally, we say to people, you can bring as much as you can carry. Well, we were wrong to say that here. Yeah. And what was worse was that it's not so much what they carried, it's what they could wheel. So people have been bringing trolleys and buggies and everything stacked to the gills. I think for our next show, we're going to have to limit our aspirations a bit. There's no way around it. Today, the roadshow is being overwhelmed by its own success. But what did it take to get to Canada in the first place? To find out, we have to go back in time to the planning stage. This will be the other stop for the roadshow on its Canadian tour, Toronto's Casa Loma. The architecture is medieval renaissance, but any expert would tell you this is a reproduction. As a matter of fact, it's only about 90 years old. It wouldn't even qualify as an antique. It was built by an eccentric millionaire named Sir Henry Pellet. And right now, the keepers of this castle are planning what they hope to be the biggest garden party they've ever seen. It's a sultry day in August, still two full months before the roadshow events in Ottawa and Toronto. I'm starting to melt here. Yeah. Yeah. The roadshow team is in Toronto for the final planning meeting with Casa Loma's Virginia Cooper. The purpose of this meeting is to get everything we can agreed between us so everybody knows everything that's going to happen and how it's going to happen. Alec has, um, For Christopher Lewis, show. it's just one more hurdle in bringing the BBC um, show to Canada, he something he's been trying to make happen for seven years. But it's taken four visits to Canada by me uh, and three by a number of my colleagues and a number of detailed planning meetings. And the planning meeting, the final planning meeting, um, is the one where we try and nail down everything so that the, the, there are no areas of doubt. Because if you have areas of doubt, you can bet it's going to go wrong. This is our proposal of how this event would operate, um, both in fine weather and in foul. And you have given a personal assurance that it will be fine, and we are therefore depending on you for the, for the outcome. Oh, so there's no rain plan uh, um, Well, we will come to that. Okay. We will come to that. For the outside event, my suggestion was that they went straight through straight the Straight through. Um, down the steps onto the terrace to the reception, which is here. Right. That's what's fine. Right. Lewis knows it will be like managing a three-ring circus, and he'll only have that one day, show day, in October, to pull it all together. Essentially, if, if the weather's bad, the event has to go on. You know, you've got two and a half thousand people with tickets coming, and they've got to be serviced, and we would do it inside in, in, to that design. With the experience of hundreds of these meetings under his belt, Lewis realizes he'll have to reassure an apprehensive host. Yeah, because some of them are, are very rare, one-of-a-kind plants, so... The plants in the garden are sacrosanct, and I've given a personal guarantee, everybody, that no plant will be damaged. Um, and if it is, we've got to do something serious about it. Uh, but I think without question, the castle will be the notable piece of the... So far, the meeting's gone without a hitch. And the entire program is designed to display it beautifully, so I don't think you'll be disappointed. But here's a sticking point. I need to have the Kiwanis reference at some point. The Kiwanis reference? The Kiwanis, the people who, are, the people who I work for. Yeah. It I seems Virginia may have her own PR agenda. The, the basic raw material of the roadshow is these appraisals, which, you know, are, and that's what people watch the show for. And if we insert too much what, what one might describe as public relations, to give a verbal list of credits, it really doesn't sit happily. It looks... It looks staged and set up and unnecessary. It can't all be about ca Casa Loma. No, no, I understand cool. that, but part of it is, is it not? Part of it, yeah. Yeah, we'll say what the castle is. Us on the opening. <laughs> Aren't you? I promise. Are you? I promise. 
that that promise. It would, it would be, it would be clear, clearly ridiculous if we didn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm trust, feeling, trust me, Virginia. Not really, really comfortable about it. Trust me, Virginia. At the end of forty-five minutes, you know, people will know this place. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Keep the meeting moving. Right. Don't get tripped up um, in PR. Catering. Catering. That's next on this 13-point agenda. They'll work for two hours pinning down every detail, but the most important thing is beyond their control. I mean, the big issue at Casaloma is will the weather be kind to us? Because if it isn't, we're going to have a very difficult day. But for now, it's back to England to tape more British shows, because the road show's schedule never lets up. Nottingham, England, mid-September. Still two weeks to go before the Canadian tour. The Antiques Roadshow has arrived in town to make its 450th show. In Britain, this is what a roadshow day usually looks like. The only precious possessions on wheels? Babies and strollers. Of course, there's always loyal viewers in attendance. They make it fascinating, oh, don't it does, they? Yes, yes. yes. You're amazed at the price of some of the things you see. Yes. yes. No, we have a big mark round the television book. Yeah. Do not miss. <laughs> now in its 24th season, the roadshow has covered most of the United Kingdom, stopping in at cities like Nottingham every other week. At British shows, there's no tickets required. It's come one, come all. It's jolly nice, this one. And if you miss this one, there'll be another one nearby before too long. Why do they keep coming? Well, I suppose everyone wants to think they've got something that will be worth a lot of money. It is, it's, it's a bit like fishing. You go fishing and you're always hoping to catch the big one. There are 65 experts in the roadshow stable. 20 work each show. The rest of the time, they have real jobs in the antique business. And what have you got? Expert Nicholas Mitchell is manning the reception table. Oh, that's pretty. We do see so many watches like that, but that is so much nicer than the average. That is His lovely. job? To direct but each person to the correct lineup. Porcelain, keep moving up, please. There, they'll wait for an appraisal by the expert who specializes in their type of item. I am not going to touch them. They look very nice. Are they Mitchell also plays another role. He acts as an early warning system, yep, finds interesting things as soon as they come through the door. Shortcut the lineups and get a piece with potential to the right specialist as quickly as possible. Excuse me, John. I thought you might like to have a look at those. Mitchell will be making the trip to Canada. I personally don't know what we're going to find in Canada. I'm very excited to be going. I have never been to Canada. Um, and I gather not, not many of my colleagues have either. I'm just a bit worried. And I don't really want to... Christopher Lewis? He's got the planning in place for the Canadian tour, and it's still two weeks before they'll make the trip. But he's starting to sense that these Canadian shows will put the roadshow team to the test. It's, it's likely to have a very different feel to an English show. I think it's going to be a, a fascinating exercise, but one that I look with some trepidation to. Uh, it's going to be tough. Finally, it's off to Canada. 45 of the roadshow team are making the trip. Prep day at the National Gallery. Lewis is already on to the first order of business. Peter Baker, Christopher Lewis. Peter. Ah. Meeting the five Canadian experts who've been added to the team. <laughs> Jeannie with the auburn hair wearing a black top will be dressed in red tomorrow so I can find her. How do you do? Oh, Jeannie. Nice to meet you. How do you do? Um, hello, Donald. She's in the tray. <laughs> I know a bit about what you're talking about. Lewis and Jeannie decide which items are good enough to tape for TV. Silly, of course it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> It's the first time the show's called in local help. Lewis knows there will be items brought to the Canadian events that they never see in Britain. You're dealing actually for the English audience as well as the Canadian, and I hasten to say the English audience is about 10 million, so it's a bit bigger than the Canadian audience. So it has to be understandable for them. Value both in pounds and dollars. So now these Canadians are being put through a crash course on how to be a roadshow expert. Value doesn't have to be the deciding criteria. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Anything with a good story. Good story. Now, the only danger of that is that we don't patronize people and we don't put them right. down. Right. If you don't give them bad news, yeah. you obviously do it nicely. Right. Um, right. And that, that is important to the show. I mean, people actually complain at me when, if you do that. Mm. Take it home and yeah. keep it for another hundred years. Is what exactly. yeah. um, they know antiques, but this is television. When you find something at the table and you think it might be recordable, do not spill the beans. 
There's so many tricks to learn before tomorrow's show. Don't do that. <laughs> Appreciate that we are putting close-ups in that we'll blow that up to full screen size. If you do that, it's gone. You'd just be speaking to me and All right. demonstrating, and then at the end... I have my fingernails we... because I brought the farm with me. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Turn things around slowly, hold them, and don't, don't fiddle. That's another piece of American earthenware. I guess I'm not supposed to turn it that fast, am I? If it's a good value, and it's going to be a whopper, yeah, I use it, milk it, you know. What do you think it's worth? Mm -hmm. And when you hit them with the figure, there is a trick, I don't know if you use this, which is you simply stop talking. The camera is not on you. It feels awful when you do it. But the fact is the picture is on them. And they will respond in the end. It may take them 30 seconds, but they will respond. Yeah. If you can hold your tongue long enough. Because if you fill the space, as you would in the social surroundings, you let them off the hook. But because it's been refinished and highly refinished. Well, that's right. Canadian Peter Baker has been called out of class to consult with John Bly. He's been a roadshow furniture expert since it began. I like the screws in there. Good Robertson screw. That's a Canadian screw, you know. Oh, is it? It's the best screw made. <laughs> it is. But where are the rest of the British experts? That's your meeting tonight. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're all anxious to meet you, and, and, and you'll work together. The Canadian experts, they're joining such an established organization that it's a bit intimidating, so we try and, we try and make it easier for them. Um, everybody's very friendly, and when they've had dinner with people, you feel better, don't you? you, you you've got to know them a bit. And I think that's important to sort of stabilize the team. Dinner, no small affair. It's at the British High Commissioner's residence in Ottawa. A lineup out the door in a crowded room. It must be a roadshow event. The Canadian experts are settling in. can't get away with jeans everywhere. This is, this is a serious expert. Most of the other ones. That's right, right. They all sort of thing. You're an auctioneer. And one, Canadian painting expert Eric Peters, seems to be making an impression on the Brits. <laughs> but but what's, that, what's the most expensive thing you've ever sold? Uh, actually, we just set a world record for Canadian work about an auction, 2.4 million. Uh, Lord Harris. Yeah, it was 2.4 million. 2 .4 million, which for yeah. Canada, it's that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Well, as I say, it's a world record. It's the most expensive Canadian thing. I mean, it, never been on the market. Uh, uh, immaculate condition. What we all dream and, about. Yeah, exactly. It's what we all look for. And yeah. how many do you think are missing? Meanwhile, in Toronto, the Roadshow Advance team has already hit the bricks. This is what's known as the furniture ramp. Hello, Sandra Davis. Hello, Rosemary. Nice to meet you. Antiques Roadshow. Every show needs some big furniture, and Andrew Davis must scout out good pieces that are too large for people to bring to the show themselves. All I really need to do is what Split I'm doing at the moment, is just having a you, Can a, a you tell me anything it. about it? I could, but I won't. Oh, that's not but, fair. <laughs> well, if, if we were doing the... Uh, the furniture in the house, yeah. we wouldn't need to go to the Casa would I we? I know, but this is anyhow. Um, no, I'm, I'm not going to say anything at this time. Okay. We'll keep our powder dry. Andrew uh, Davis, Antique Show. How do you do, yes. Visiting you now mm -hmm. doesn't mean automatically that I will be able to take the things that you've got in. I understand. In. So, I, understand. So I, I have a quick look at, right. at them now. Right. I don't talk to you about them. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you call it? What do I call it? Yeah. Just the big old oak chair, I guess. The big really. old oak chair that turns into table. It's been table. in the family for years and years yep. and years. Very the secret problem. mission on these home visits? Uh, have a look yeah. around and see if there's anything else that's interesting. I see you have a nice chest of drawers there and a nice tray. Um, in four days, Davis will visit about 30 homes. People with furniture they want considered have submitted photographs. Based on these, Davis decides where he'll go. Difficult to tell until we get there. And he always delivers the same message. About 20% of those items I'm able to move. It's, it's a shame we can't do the other 80, but we don't have the time and we don't have the space. So I have to make a fairly ruthless choice at some stage when I've seen everybody. The odds are against each person and their treasure advancing. That is going to sit on the back burner until Monday. Mid-afternoon, jet lag is starting to set in. But this whirlwind scavenger hunt continues. We're going to go and have a look at a late 19th century clock. I can justifiably call a monster because it is so tall. Hi, Andrew Davis. Andrew? Andrew Crochet. No. Come see your clock. Surely the odds of finding something to bring into the Casa Loma show are working in Davis's favor by now. 
we have intruded enough, but thank you very much indeed. Oh, that's okay. As I say, if we can, I will contact you on Monday. You're just doing the big furniture, right? Not just furniture, anything which is large and bulky. Right. Um, oh. It can include pictures. I got 12, actually. Are you going to tell me how much you got them for? Yes, I will. Yeah? Dollar fifty for all of them. Goody. Oh, great. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's going to be great. Well, I'd give you two dollars for them. <laughs> Plus the framing charge, but we're not allowed to have any commercial deals right. with uh, our customers. They go up the stairs. Can I just have a quick look? Sure, sure. I don't think they're reproductions. No, that's 1938. That's Italian. Wonderful. Made my day. Right, on to the next one. We will intrude no more. Toronto. It's a quick turnaround for the roadshow team. Action! They've just arrived from Ottawa, and there's only one day to prepare for tomorrow's show at Casa Loma. A, a movement away from us, I think. Is Host Michael Aspel is taping the links. Because we had an overwhelming response, we're asking everybody to limit the number of items they're bringing to a maximum of five. And there's a last-minute attempt to avert another avalanche of objects coming into the Toronto show. We're only doing this in case it rains. At Casa Loma, the television crew is getting ready for any kind of weather. 10% chance of rain tomorrow? We have just hired a tent today just to cover the cameras in case. But, I mean, touch and go, isn't it? Touch and go. Alec Ural is a 20-year veteran of the roadshow. So this is the boss. You'll tell me what I'm up to. He's in charge of making the public events run smoothly. There's certainly more people coming. Oh, well, that's great anyway. Oh, what, more people coming? Yes, there were more tickets went out for Toronto. Oh, right. But without the, the trolleys, we hope. Well, yeah, the four-wheel trolleys and the rope in front and the pusher behind, yeah. 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 John Bly, the roadshow furniture expert, is waiting for the truck to arrive, full of pieces selected by Andrew Davis during the furniture round. I understand there's pages of media coming tomorrow, oh, yeah. so yeah. that's oh, Well, do you see our press for Ottawa? Uh, some of it, yes. Very, very good press. Tough day, it was, because of the enthusiasm. But yes. it, it worked, it worked. Well, I suspect we'll have the same kind of crowds tomorrow. Oh, Don't I think, you think? We, well, we're I mean, going to get the numbers, mm -hmm. but we shall have less objects. We had so many wheeled vehicles stacked high with objects that we just couldn't cope with that. And, mm -hmm. and so we've now had to be quite severe and say five objects each. Mm -hmm. The last man in the queue was just before nine o'clock. He said, yeah. I've got two items to show you, Simon, to the clocks man. Mm -hmm. He opened a box and there were a hundred watches in it. Oh, mm -hmm. no. I mean, people... Oh. <laughs> Their expectation is very great. So how did you deal with that? You did two of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. The furniture round truck full of treasures has finally arrived. <laughs> yes, the monster clock has made it. And so have the posters. It's a bit like uh, Christmas this, isn't it? You don't know what you're going to find. And a surprise. Goodness, Look what fun. else is here. But no the big old oak chair that turns into a table. It's, it's got to be period. Let's just turn this top over. Translation? I don't know. It's it 350 started. years old. But look at the color here. And look at this crustiness here. Mm. See, nobody would fake that. You can't fake that. You can't darken oak like that. It won't take a stain. So it has to be oxidization. Well, well done, Andrew. Well, lucky. Lucky good. Lucky. Now the decision has been made. They're going with the garden venue. And any large pieces of furniture we would take out of the conservatory anyway and film outside. I mean, I... So the final word to the TV crew? We're in Disneyland. There's only nine hours of sunlight to work with tomorrow. They have to be finished taping on time. <laughs> Much after half past six is, is not really viable. Yeah, OK. Well, our intention clearly is not to go beyond half past six. Um, but there are a lot of people coming. And so um, we will have to respond as the situation develops. But certainly we're trying everything to uh, to finish on time so this is it show day at casa Roma. i came from montreal my brother came from nova scotia 
from Cape Breton. Alloy. Paid twenty-five dollars for it. Hope it's worth more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad it's a nice day. Weather couldn't be better. But the lineup of ticket holders is already incredible. It's just to bring all you can carry. So if my daughter pack up a lot of things when coming with, I don't know what's going to happen now. <laughs> it was my mother's. That's all I know. She got it when she went to see Gone with the Wind up in Sudbury. Uh, jewelry. <laughs> Inside, some experts spend their last few quiet moments taking a quick look at the pieces selected during the furniture round. New signature. It's really nice. Who would have thought Spit was part of the toolkit? 1920. Well, that's not... No, 1900. That's, 1900. Yes, that's, exactly. that's what we want. Yeah, stains. Very nice. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Pretty good. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's really early, too. Yeah. What's it doing in Canada? Oh, pity. <laughs> <laughs> Canada, you say? <laughs> oh, pity. <laughs> Remember the woman with the clock and posters? She's arrived with her daughter for her roadshow moment. Right. Um, why don't I get you both down to make up? Anyone with a pre-selected piece has been given an appointment. That gets them in ahead of the crowd. And here they come. Now, it's up to the roadshow team to make sure it all gets done. Yikes. Search through everything that's been pulled out of Canadian cupboards to find the special things that will make 45 minutes of good TV. And deal with this voracious crowd by identifying and appraising everything they've carted in. We should be doing this item in a few minutes, so what we're going to do with... Mostly the furniture will be done at the top, but as you brought it all... <laughs> so uh, it's just a matter of carrying it up the stairs again. I'm kidding. <laughs> Put it on my back. Next, please, unpacked and unwrapped. Unpacked and unwrapped. Yeah. <laughs> and I think almost certainly this looks as if it came from Russia. Icons tend to be not very commercial. I don't think it's a chamber pot. So, um, <laughs> it might be a sugar. Um, but, I brought um, the pottery just so that I could meet you. How oh, did you? <laughs> very nice. Right to see. Soapstone is... is as it sounds, it's a very, very soft material. It is easy to carve, therefore requires no great skill. Okay? Um, an interesting fact is that soapstone, if you grind it up, is talcum powder. That's what this is. This is talcum powder pre-grinding. Whether it's worth as much as a, uh, a tin of Johnson's baby powder, I don't know. Now, there's a whole other game that the experts are playing here. Sure, they have to keep the customers, as they call them, happy and moving along. But when they find a really interesting object, they gear up for a whole new race. First out of the gate, Clive Stewart Lockhart, a picture expert. He's found something he likes. Now to get Jeannie's attention. But she's in full flight. Much. Ooh, I don't say at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you tease. <laughs> What's well, it? Oh, good for you. It's, it's a good early start. It's a good start to the day, yes, indeed. <laughs> but that's just the start. Jeannie Darrington runs the schedule. Yes. And with time to tape only 40 items, each expert has to get his selection by her and Christopher Lewis. All right, well, I'll go okay. with Christopher. Is that okay? Um, but I need to speak with him, I'll let you know. Okay. Only they have the power to make the final decision. So if I put these things to one side Please. and then uh, I'll I'll come back. I will come back to you, I promise. Okay, right. Well, you can't watch the action for very long without wanting to give it a try. That nice. Smith. You ever had it appraised? No. So what do you think it's worth? I don't have a clue. Go in the safety Exactly. Did you bring something? I've got the junk, I guess. They're sending oh, miscellaneous. me to... I'm with her, actually, but they've just sent me to miscellaneous. <laughs> that, that can't be good. Half cool the fun? The people you meet in line. So what so, did you bring? Just well, I brought half of it because it was just too heavy for me to carry. But I've got all oh, the pieces there. Oh, I used to. There. Oh, forever. Well, that's fabulous. Yeah, so that's it. Are you, we're well, going to miscellaneous. Where is miscellaneous? It's way down there. My mother-in-law's mother's cameo. Oh, it looks lovely. Oops. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And uh, what's the story behind this? It's your mother-in-law's mother's... Mother's mother. It came from England. So any idea what, what you think you'll get for this? No idea. Not even a, a, Not a, a wild clue. dream, a Probably hope, much, a five <laughs> bucks. I don't Be think kind, so. man. Be kind. You want to see mine? Yes. That's wow. Mine. That's lovely. I thought you were going to say it was interesting. No. <laughs> I thought it was lovely. 
Oh, there goes the garage sale posters and their owners into position. I'm not going to get any awards for good housekeeping. There's <laughs> three inches of dust on it. Can you imagine your feet are glued to the floor? So you can lean in, look at what he's pointing at, but don't, don't come around because as you start to come around, it, it blocks, blocks the shots. Let's go then, please, everybody. Let's do it, guys. Buy them at a garage sale. Are you Italian? No. Not at all? No. Um, right, let's see what we've got. So, this is very stylish. Visit Pompeii by night. Yeah, they look like 1930s. Um, right. Rather than being precise in date, it has a very sort of classical art deco elegance about it. This one, I think, is very nice, too. Oh, look, yes. Again, a very stylish, stylized, simplified um, image of the bather. And it's such a simple image. The great design of this period was about strength and simplicity. So, where did they come from? You said from a garage sale. Garage sale. For the 12 posters, we paid a dollar fifty each. All, all of them. The pile. The whole pile. I'm, I'm staggered. I am too. If you take an average price of eight hundred dollars, that's nine thousand dollars. That's good. Is that all right? Yes, that's fine. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's an amazing find. Well, it's my turn. This is what I have. This is a um, bracelet given to my grandmother. It's almost impossible to really date this type of jewelry because it's traditional and they carry on making the same, same thing over and over and again. And I dare say if we went to Morocco, you'd probably find something similar, but not such good quality, but it's a very nice quality one. Um, on this show, we see a lot of jewellery that has a lot of sentimental value for people because it's been the founders a long time. Oh, sentimental value. About five hundred dollars. So you know. So we sit and guard these till they come. Well, other people's things are starting to get the experts excited. I take pots to bed with me now. Henry Sandin at the porcelain table has got Christopher's attention. I'm the producer. Hello. Welcome to the show. Yeah, Henry likes I don't he see likes you. your stuff. You don't, I'm backstage. I'm the boss. <laughs> I'm the power behind the throne. We just appear in front uh, of the camera. <laughs> you, you, have you had them looked at professionally? Just here. Just now, just well, now. Yes. She hasn't told you anything yet. She's though, a member of the Bleak um, I'm a little Society. So do you know everything there is to know about them? No, not really. Not really. <laughs> All right, okay. Okay, well, lot, if you'd like to stay put, I will get my, uh, my colleague to come and sign you into our recording system. It is very difficult sometimes on the roadshow to make uh, judgments between completely different objects about what would suit the programme best. And every expert has his own enthusiasm and he comes rushing up saying, I've got this wonderful piece of silver. And I am bound sometimes to say, well, how good is it? I mean, are you likely to see something better later in the day? Henry, are you, let's get you mic'd up and then we'll get you sat down. Right. We got a nice warm day. Isn't it gorgeous? White chairs be Henry Sandin is about to give the lady with the balik her 15 minutes of fame, but he's already talking to Lewis about another find, one of his favorites, English Worcester porcelain. Canada. Sounds like local is a desired ingredient. That could give an item with a Canadian background an edge. Now, who is James Anderson to you? <laughs> Donald Ellis, one of the Canadian experts, thinks he's got one. Now he's got to track down Lewis to deliver the sales pitch. What's the story behind this? The story is extraordinary, Christopher. Um, this man, James Anderson, who was a fairly important Hudson's Bay factor, um, settled in a town called Sutton, Ontario. This is the object that's, well, I'm sure these other things are valuable too. This object he collected when he was here. He collected this at what sort of date? 18, we know exactly right, when right, he was there. Right, eight, right. Eight, we, know, we have all of his chronology here. Yes. Um, Value-wise, it's probably 15 to 20,000 pounds. Yes, yes. Is he likely to know that? They don't have a clue. Okay, well, so certainly we'd like to record that. Yeah. We, I'll give you some time to think about how we do yeah. it. Yeah. You'll have to simplify the story to a degree. Of course. Uh, wonderful, wonderful discovery. Okay, yes. And, and very exciting for us too, so. It's a two-hour wait before the Hudson's Bay relics will be taped. Briefly, I'm in the middle of the Antiques Roadshow and I didn't have access to the internet, so I thought I'd go to the next best thing. Time for a research call to an expert in the field to get all the facts straight. Appreciate the uh, access to the brain, sir. Okay. People I met in the jewelry line have made it to the expert. Yeah, well, as far as I can see, these are amethysts. He was looking at this one Yeah, he liked it. They yeah. were amethysts with crystal facets. Uh -huh. 
and he said about $800. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. So the experience was? Fun. Fun. It's fun, yeah. But you're not a millionaire. Not yet. All right, well, let, let's, let's move We're to... We're not uh, quitting our day job. How about, okay, Miss Miscellaneous. Yes. <laughs> how did mini breaks do? Not well. <laughs> $45. 45 bucks. Yeah. I thought it was Monopoly worth more. Monopoly costs 45 bucks. <laughs> it's a Tommy Twin shirt for 1000 It's uh, an American clasp that we didn't know or an American setting. Mm -hmm. so we thought it was English. So this is an American piece. Mm -hmm. So 1000 bucks. It's pretty good. You want to know how much my thing is worth? Yeah, tell me. 500 bucks. No kidding. Way to go. I guess. It's my sister's. I get nothing from this. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that's wow. my little thing. What's the subject? Railway crash. Good pieces are starting to pop up all over the place. It's an accident with the Railway. John Forbes, one of the Canadiana experts, has convinced Lewis this folk art painting is worth taping. All right. Okay. But he also has high hopes for another piece. Are you holding it? I don't like breaking uh, <laughs> This little brown jug. Okay. Um, so you've had this in the family for a long time? Well, we've had it for 25 years. Yeah, it's part of the collection. My mother had it. Yeah, my mother collected crotch. She, she was an antique dealer. Right. She collected the Roadshow preference is for pieces that aren't already well known by collectors. I'm going to pass on that and go to the future. Okay. So even right. though it's Canadian, Lewis moves on. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Here's some action at the silver so that's, table. That's a seriously good thing, and so I don't really want to say anything more about it. Uh, to get my reaction. And to, well, yeah, we, we, these are one-off takes, and you know, we don't have a rehearsal. We just go straight in, and we'll um, we'll come back to you in a moment and give you a time when we can film it. Tim Potter, one of the Canadian experts, has even found an interesting item at Miscellaneous. Now to get Lewis's attention. Godly town. We have the uh, Montreal Fire Department helmet. He joined the fire department in April 1889, retired in 1909. Can we do this one? Yes, I think you should. Okay. Looks like the TV show is coming together, but how about the crowd still waiting in line? You have a nice little walking stick there. Isn't that nice? You're going to need it, or you can let me borrow it if you like. <laughs> You're I'm, welcome. I'm on my last legs. Think it was what about one? us? No, we <laughs> haven't too many legs left either. Yeah, but you've only walked this way once. I've walked it about 50 times already. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank Enjoy. You Thank you. All right. Yeah. There we go. You folks okay? Yeah, fine. It's a long, long journey, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So how long have you been here so far? About quarter after 10, I think. Quarter after 10. Yeah. So you've been here, what, five hours? Yeah. Almost, yeah. yeah. Who's your bear? <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. If we had been back home without all these numbers, that would have been I spotted much earlier. I mean, that, that bear is the sort of the quality that we would have fished out and had a closer look at much, much earlier than this. Oh, okay. But, I mean, there's something... I can't. We're all, we're, it's, it's all full, it's all jammed, and... We're about halfway through. It's, it's going to be another late night. Time. We've just had a little look round the back there, and they're talking about a kilometre in length, the queue. It's absolutely incredible to turn out here. It's late afternoon at the Castle Loma show. Only two hours to go until sundown. Thank you. Thank you. You only got five items in there, haven't you? Actually, no, I have he, already, he already did it, and there were only five. Oh, good. Wow. But we only yes. have one clock. <laughs> yes. Lewis needs to start cracking the whip. You've got to have a strategy meeting about the people. Let's get the pace increased up there, regardless. We're doing our best. And back up here if we have to, all right? Yep. Yes. The road show is about to hit the wall. These Canadians have dug deep into their closets and come up with an endless supply of everything imaginable. And pigs are very popular. People collect pigs. Uh, probably worth some in the region of around about or maybe $120. $150 worth of marbles, maybe a little more. Want it for four I mean, for four but these hand blown. These were hand blown. Yeah. Anyway. Someone was just making fun of me in the lineup over there yeah. because it had marble. Oh, really? <laughs> we're calling her the Marble Queen. Oh, the marble queen. <laughs> so you have the spoon holder, covered sugar spoon, and, yeah. and uh, covered butter. That would be worth about uh, <laughs> 175 to 200 on the four piece set. 200. Yeah, and the pattern is stipple swirl and star. Yep. Four piece set. 
200 dollars this is a, the type of glass we just don't see in britain that's the problem and we know that there's a big market for it here and despite swatting up on as much as we can as north american decorative arts you cannot know the price of everything it's about it's never, luckily we this got isn't from britain no 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 Can you tell me it was it came from Britain, or it came from supposed to have come from Scotland. No, but, but I would say that either one of them would fetch somewhere between five and six thousand each. Well, I won't sell them then. <laughs> Want more than that? <laughs> the cameras are rolling non-stop. Okay, we're up to speed. Three's on the ISO. My God, I'm blinded here. Stand by. No complaints. And cue him. And in the control room, the directors are doing their best to keep to the schedule. From the thousands of things, only around 40 are being taped. And that's not the end to this game of elimination. Only about half of those taped will be selected for the final television show. Lovely, very nice, like them very much. Hey, it's the 350-year-old chair table. It's all serendipity as far as I'm concerned being here because I didn't expect to be, but circumstances have just happened that suddenly I'm here. It's wonderful. I often pat it, and, as I said, and say, how do you like being so old? And how do you like having a TV on, the, on you? <laughs> it's, it's just hard to, um, to fathom something that is that old. It was $30,000. It was really quite shocking. <laughs> That's the story on the big old oak chair that turns into a TV table. But what about that monster clock? When I saw it this morning, I said, we can't do it, it'll take an hour. Because all of the big hammers on, that strike the tubes all need to be adjusted. It's not a big problem, but it's got to just set dead level. And our producer said, we'd love to. I said, have you got an hour or so to kill? And we looked at the crowd outside and he said, we can't, we just, we haven't got the time. But they're a great clock to have in the house. So they, they do have quite a following. Um, that's probably of the order of 15,000, something like that. $15,000? Gosh. And what about that serious piece of silver? Uh, basically, we've been sitting here waiting um, uh, for the expert to come back. He's off doing, uh, we were told by one of the producers that uh, it was a toss up between this item and the Clara Jug one, and he's off doing the interview about the Clara Jug right now. There is some consolation. Later, they were told it's worth forty-five thousand dollars. We've got a, a full recording schedule, um, so the program content is not a problem. It's simply the public event. So we've got to worry about what to do about it. It's time to start clearing house. And will certain individuals, when they've had their item valued and appraised, not go into another queue with the same item to another expert. It is this sort of thing which is creating such a slowdown in the event. The queue is still three quarters of a kilometer outside. I just warn the experts that they're going to be working by torchlight if we're not careful. The problem is, as they're being pushed out the back door, they're still pouring through the front. We're just about halfway at the moment, which is very worrying. You're right. There are yeah. more people outside than have come through yet. Okay, well, I brought my sleeping bag. Okay, so... Okay, uh, just keep it short. I mean, we're just, I'm just being as snappy as we can. Yeah. We get them in, yeah. we're getting them out okay. as quickly as we can. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm a headmaster with a lot of unruly pupils who I, I have to control sometimes. Well, they're all my friends, and uh, we are a sort of big family. And we, because we travel together, we get to know each other terribly well. It's a great door knocker, isn't it? Yeah. David Batty ought to have one of those. Yeah. It's a door knocker, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Bang, bang. Yeah. It's in house stuff, too, isn't it? When some of you have finished and had your items valued, then you might like to go home for a cup of tea or a gin and tonic. Um, and as far as the experts are concerned, if they are listening, they hardly ever do, but if they are listening, um, the schedule is full. The schedule is full. Miscellaneous for those. I've already given some. Yeah, you've yes. got this. Oh, I'll go to the studio. Can you follow me? Thanks. Remember Nicholas Mitchell, the expert in Nottingham, England? 
We, we don't normally go this fast, I must tell you, because, I mean, it's just today. I mean, I don't normally do it like this at all, but we've just got to needs must. He's been working reception for a good deal of this demanding day. Well, I have actually put, picked out some one or two very, very good things which have made recordings for other fellow experts. But on the whole, it's, uh, it's uh, people's favourite things, let's put it that way. Right. And who is next? Nobody's going to admit to being next. We're going to continue on out here, obviously as long as we possibly can, get us through as many people as we can. We made it. We made it. Yes. And let's hope it's not going to be nine o'clock this time. Well, I have a horrible feeling it's going to be. Yeah. Rally the troops. John, are you going down the queue, John? No, I'm going down the queue. All right, all right, good. Anything will help. Move the experts into the lines to try to thin the crowd before they even make it to the garden. Wonderful quality. This cost a fortune when it was new. Is that right? Oh, sure. Fantastic. Both John Bly and Peter Baker really off, like this just, carved yeah, screen. Just interlocking. Yeah. But it's too late. Well, I think 10 to 12,000 is a conservative estimate. You want to go out? Uh, you want to get, get out? Out, uh, John! You want to just get out? Out! Uh, Come this way. And so it goes into the evening. Uh, it's getting very dark. We give uh, our experts out there, please, just about 10, 15 minutes before it begins too dark. We don't want to disappoint anybody. It's the last thing we want to do. We're going on trying to clear the public and make everybody satisfied. Because they've waited so long, we've got to see them. The editing experience is fantastic. Afterwards, in retrospect, it'll feel fantastic. Just at the moment, it's a bit harassing. This Canadian crowd just never wants this day to end. One thing for sure, we won't forget this for the rest of our lives. <laughs> After all, who knows when, if ever, this roadshow will be back in town. Thousands have descended on the National Gallery in Ottawa. I'm glad it's not raining. The smell of wet wool would just be awful and they've dredged up all the family heirlooms. Hi, Brother Clark. Supposed to be older than I am. And oddball ornaments they could possibly find. We've still got about an hour ahead of you before you get to our reception. you brought everything, haven't you? Just about everything. everything but the kitchen, the, uh, I think kitchen, the kitchen sink. sink is there too. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's been a huge, huge turnout. We thought that, you know, there would be a dropout from the tickets, but nobody has dropped out. 